the topic of this session is judicial intendants and role of judges judicial ethics and conduct in this session we are overwhelmed with delight to have honorable mr justice t vaifi former chief justice high court of tripura and honorable mr justice s talapatra judge high court of tripura as speakers of this session may i now request the honorable speakers to please grace the dais Thank you, my lords. Francis Bacon, an English philosopher and statesman who served as Attorney General and as Lord Chancellor of England, once quoted, "The place of justice is a hallowed place, and therefore not only the bench but also the foot space and precincts and purpose thereof ought to be preserved without scandal and corruption." An independent judiciary is the sine qua non of a vibrant democratic system. only an impartial and independent judiciary can stand as a bulwark for the protection of the rights of the individuals and mete out even handed justice without fear or favor for rule of law to prevail judicial independence is of prime necessity the independence of judiciary needs to be constantly guarded against the unexpected events and the changing social political economic conditions it is too fragile to be left unguarded In India the question of independence of the judiciary has been a subject of heated national debate over the last many years judicial ethics is part of the larger category of legal ethics judicial ethics consists of the standards and norms that bear on judges and covers such matters as how to maintain independence impartiality and avoid impropriety honorable mr justice t vip was enrolled in the bar council of assam on 22nd of august 1980 his lordship started law practice in the courts of manipur in the year 1980 and also started appearing in the courts of the district and session judge manipur in criminal and civil cases both in the original and civil sides in the year 1983 his lordship specialized in constitutional law public law and service matter His lordship started practicing in the Imphal bench of the Guwahati High Court in the year 1990. His lordship was empanelled as defence pleader in Mizoram on 16th October 1998, and thereafter appointed as assistant advocate general of Mizoram on 12th of February 1999. Thereafter, his lordship was appointed as the public prosecutor for the High Court on 8th of March 1999. His lordship was further appointed. as additional advocate general mizoram on 15th september 2000 and then designated as senior advocate on 22nd february 2001 his lordship was elevated to the bench as additional judge guwahati high court on 17th july 2003 and was made permanent judge on 28th of february 2005 thereafter his lordship was appointed as acting chief justice on 21st october 2015 His lordship took oath as the chief justice of the high court of tripura on 21st of september 2016 and retired on 28th of february 2018 on superannuation his lordship is currently holding the post of the chairperson of the assam human rights commission honorable mr justice s talapatra did his lordship's graduation in arts and law from university of calcutta and thereafter his lordship was enrolled with the bar council of assam nagaland meghalaya manipur tripura and mizoram arunachal pradesh on september 12 1990 his lordship practiced mainly at agartala bench of the guwahati high court and appeared in catena of constitutional civil and criminal matters his lordship was designated as senior advocate on 21st of december 2004 his lordship was sworn in as an additional judge of the guwahati high court 
on November 15, 2011, His Lordship took oath as permanent judge of the High Court of Tribura on 13th September 2013. His Lordship officiated as the Acting Chief Justice of the High Court of Tribura with effect from 2nd of November 2018 to 13th of November 2018. Thereafter, His Lordship officiated as the Acting Chief Justice of the High Court of Tribura again with effect from 11th of November 2019 to 15th of November 2019. Along with being a Justice of the High Court of Tripura, His Lordship is also the Chairperson of the Computer Committee of the High Court of Tripura and also the Executive Chairperson of the Tripura State Legal Service Authority as well as the Chairman of the Juvenile Justice Committee of the Honorable High Court. May I now request our esteemed guest, Honorable Mr. Justice T. Vaipi, former Chief Justice High Court of Tripura, kindly to initiate this session. Good afternoon. At the outset, I would like to say something which I forgot to say in my earlier speech. I am very, very happy today to be in the company of Justice Lord and Justice Chatterjee. They have become a high court judge now. Earlier, they used to be one Register General, one advocate. And now I'm proud, I'm proud to say that both of them have been elevated to the uh, bench after I left Tripura. Congratulations belatedly. <laughs> so, okay, thank you very much, Your Lordship, uh, to give me an opportunity to address this conclave. In my opinion, the topic for today's discussion or today's conclave, as you call it, is timely and highly relevant subject. As you, are, as you are aware, the concept of independence of judiciary as the basic feature of the Constitution has been firmly laid, laid down by the 13 bench judge, 13 judge bench of the Honorable Supreme Court in Kesavananda Bharati's case, or popularly known as fundamental right cases. This judgment was followed time, again, time and again in the following years. And it is firmly embedded in our constitution, though it is not factually in text incorporated. That is an understood, understood by necessary implication. Today, I would like to deal with the threat to independence of judiciary, not from the executive, which you know now by now. Um, teen times it has been said, the threat coming from the executive. We know very well this is happening. Yesterday, day before yesterday, today it is happening. This, I think, I did not elaborate because we know what's, what is going on. We don't know how to solve it also. But I don't know whether... I will be correct if I say that this threat from executive side comes to the judicial officers. As per my experience, while well, uh, uh, doing much uh, trial, trial, trial work as a lawyer, executive hardly interferes in the works of judicial officers. To me, this threat usually comes from within, within us, family, relatives, friends. How to insulate yourself from the pulls and pressures of your family, relatives, and friends? Because they, from my experience, family friends or friends or relatives, they think that we are like another executive officers, so that lobbying can, can be done with us. They will try to seek favor. The moment you become a judge, they'll say, oh, my friend or my relative has become a judge from now on. If there is any case, he could get, help me. Uh, or somebody may like to become a agent 
of somebody. Uh, so in that way, this kind of impression is there. I don't know in Tripura, but uh, it's been a state like uh, Madhipur or in Mizoram or in Meghalaya, it is rampant. Gawati is a big city, so at least in Gawati, it is uh, uh, not very significant. But in a small state, especially in a small town, these are happening every now and then, and you cannot avoid it. So how do you insulate yourself from these pools and pressures? In my case, how I did, sometimes I had to go to the extent of severing my relationship with these people. Of course, after I leave, I try to renew my friendship. Some of them accepted it glad, 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 gladly. Some of them, they forget me for life. That is the difficulty, seeking favor from a judge by a family friend, or by a friend, or, you know, they will say, if we don't have them, what is the use of this man becoming a judge when he cannot even give me a favorable order for me or for my friends, for my relative? That kind of attitude also they have. This is the problem faced by judicial officials of other states in the Northeast. As I said, they don't know the distinction between the works of a judicial officer and executive officer. This is the problem. This is actually a reality. I cannot say in Tripura, because Tripura, as far as my experience goes, I was here in two spells. First from 2003 to 2006, then from 2016 to 2018. I never come across anyone. Of course, to be frank, one guy from my hometown he came with a file, <laughs> seeking. He came with a file and he said, "You'd like to meet me." So I, uh, he was standing in the gate with the file. So he was. The moment I came to know that he is from my home state, I knew what he was coming for, and I told the guard family not to let him enter. So, since then, nobody came. And how, when the first time you deal firmly with these people, there will be no second time. The executive side also, in Tripura, no chief minister or cabinet minister ever asked me a favor. But in Meghalaya, one chief minister, definitely, through a common friend, uh, sought my favor to pass a favorable, favorable order in in favor of his party. That was about the district council uh, uh, matter. Then this common friend, I told him, see, I call him brother because his wife is also a uh, uh, second cousin of my wife. See, brother, I have every respect for honorable chief minister. Uh, of course, if I have any discretion, let's see what I can do. But then if I have no discretion, I don't think I'll do anything. In fact, even if I have a discretion also, this could be a reason for rejecting the repetition. So this is how I let it work. And you know, eventually he did not win the case. When my son, my son died, this Chief Minister avoided me totally, and his cabinet ministers. They didn't even come to me to condole. That is the price you have to pay for your independence. You should be, you should not mind about that. This kind of thing happened. And once you firmly refuse the request, right from day one, they will not come, they will never come back to you. And this relative. Friends also, the same thing. Once the favor is denied for the first time, there will be no second time. They will not come back. No other person also will come back. That is how I dealt with litigant public. And thank God, till now, 
I could assert my independence. That is the thing. Thank God in the human rights, I am chairperson of both the Assam and Meghalaya Human Rights Commission. Thank God no such pressure is necessary because of the nature of work. Nobody is, in, nobody is interested. <laughs> so no such thing happened. But as a judge, this kind of thing happened. If you refuse to accommodate them, you will be boycotted. But you have to be prepared to face that. That is the sacrifice. Without sacrifice, no independence. And another thing, let me be brutally frank. This the threat to independence of judiciary can also come from the judiciary itself. Now, one, one instance I'll give you, I'll not give the name. Somewhere in Northeast, one case of prevention of corruption act. It was about the illegal gratification. The special judge was rang up by a high court judge. Uh, they uh, see you do one thing. I know it may be difficult to acquit him, but you do like this. Uh, sentence him for two years. That, that gentleman did not know the minimum punishment and the prevention of corruption act. Four years. And this man quietly refused to oblige. Convicted him, he convicted him, and then, you know, sentenced him or her, I don't know, to four years imprisonment. That is minimum. And with a fine of one lakh rupees. Then this, this poor man, okay, after some time, he was transferred out of uh, that place. This is also a reality. Nowadays, you know, we call it executive arbitrariness. For me, judicial arbitrariness is worse because there is no appeal. At least executive arbitrariness, you can challenge in a court of law. Or you can deal with it politically or through another angle. But there is a threat coming from higher judiciary, superior judiciary. That is the most difficult part. You cannot say no. There are many examples I can give you. So the thing is, what to do? What is the solution? You cannot ignore them, but if you ignore, you'll be, you'll be failing in your duty as a judicial officer. That is where sacrifice, sacrifice again comes. You have to sacrifice for some time. This thing will not remain, this punishment will not remain perpetually. That particular just may be out, may retire, or may be transferred out, may be eventually become a high a chief justice also. So at the most, you will suffer for about three months, three years maximum. So my request to you is, don't mind, because I also suffer. I am also a victim of judicial high-handedness. But I don't compromise. Of course, the only thing I could not become was, I could not become chief justice at the, uh, after completing 10 years. I became chief justice only after 30, 13 years after receiving all kinds of punishment because of my independence. And I was supposed to go to the Supreme Court also. But the same guy, he was walking around the clock to deny me of reaching the Supreme Court. No, I am brutally frank with you. This is what my experience, because I don't believe in, uh, I believe in calling a spare a spare. And I, I am not scared. Let them know also, I don't care. Because these are the problem you have to confront time and again. So you have to sacrifice for some time, not sacrifice forever. And ultimately, you'll be upholding the majesty of law. And you'll get the respect, let me tell you. You'll get the respect. 
even after retirement also people will give you respect the people who are doing this kind of things after the retirement not even an advocate would like to speak to them they will avoid you. i know from my experience again my observation i mean to say people avoided them so this is i don't know what my lord justice telepatra had in mind when i said about this <laughs> But you know, I'm giving you the reality, okay? The practical aspect of what is the threat to independence of judiciary. And as I said, the threat of independence of threat to independence of judiciary coming from the superior judges is more difficult to take than threat coming from executive. Executive. Uh, these judges, uh, judicial officer, this uh, you as long as uh, you have not been you have not been elevated to the uh, high court, the problem we face will be, as I said, from friends, family, relatives. Hardly from executive side, and more important from the higher higher superior judiciary. This is one thing you have to confront squarely and, if necessary, sacrifice. That is the only advice I would like to give you. You have to be firm. No one will be able to punish you forever, at the most three years. But at the same time, if you do that, people will respect you. This is one judge who really up all the majesty of law, who uphold the independence of judiciary. I think that much I'll say, brother. I don't get the inspiration to say further. Okay, you, you may take it over. Thank you, my Lord Justice VP, for your insightful deliberation. May I now request Honorable Mr. Justice S. Talabatra, Speaker of this session, kindly to give His Lordship's deliberation. Ultimate judicial independence. He very candidly stated that what he suffered for the arbitrariness within the institution. In the beginning words in the inaugural session, I stated the fear none in this world. Let whatever may come in the way. Because our muscles do not make us judge. Our commitment, our integrity, the way we behave with the litigant, the way we behave with our colleagues. I will just start with, uh, just in furtherance of what Justice Vipai has said, you have come into this inst institution and every moment when you are serving this institution, remember that when I will be leaving this institution, nobody should raise any pointer to me that that person has caused the immense injustice to me. Because injustice is one of such elements what can be suppressed for the time being, but it will come out like truth. Truth gives us the solution to analyze the things, how to... So therefore, be very careful. Be very, very careful in your way of life. Justice Bhai was repeating one single word four times. Insulation. And most of us, we do not do that. Because I will not deal with the one aspect of our life that is called social media. And most of you, I believe, is in the social media. Right? The Supreme Court has organized a kind of a workshop of the senior most judges of the high courts. The 24 judges throughout the country participated in that workshop 
whether we should take part in the social media or not. Most of the judges, particularly the judges, the young judges of the High Court, who are representing their respective High Court, they say, we should be there because otherwise we will not know how the societal opinion is being formed by this media. We must know that. They are talking about the immersion. Right. But there was an unanimity in the discussion that we will not make any comment in the social media, not even tick, like, and everything. You watch, but not participate. Why that was agreed upon? Because whatever you say, even by a tick, like, this is your opinion. Right? You give the opinion, you will be invited in, in certain seminars, which is not that way. You give the opinion to raise the, the dignity of the constitution. Nothing more than nothing beyond that you should say what. In the today's world, particularly in our nation, the looking at the constitution has become a very difficult thing. So many opinions. Whether the constitution, first of all, one I am taking out, whether this constitution should be amended. Because this constitution is almost 73 years old. Our society has changed, our nation's way of looking at the things, our progress, whether we should change the constitution. And what Justice Vaipai has pointed out to one decision, this we call it is the fundamental feature case of 1973 of the Supreme Court. There says there is inherent limitation in the constitution so what the article 360 is concerned entire constitution cannot be amended and you all know those are the students of constitution that decision was challenged again before the 13 judges benches and the bitter exchanges from the bar took place finally very silently that reference was dropped and the, this inherent limitation, the latest judgment, is the NGAC case. And what is there? What is the basic, the foundation they have accepted, or the ground they have accepted to strike down the law, is independence of the judiciary. Remember this. This is the way the National Judicial Appointment Commission will be formed. The judiciary will not have say. I, I'm telling you very frankly, I have a difference of opinion. No who are in this world, the judiciary appointing the judges. And that is a serious critical criticism against our judiciary. But the way that the act was passed, that there will be the members, there will be the chief justice and one of the senior judges will be the member of that committee. But virtually, if you look at the numbers, there will be the minority. So ultimately, they have to accept whatever the executive says, that it has to be accepted. As a student of constitution, I have also toyed with the others, what can other get done, particularly the doctrine of reading down whether it could have been applied or not. That is a still a debate. And when I, I know this, our these uh, judges' salary bills were debated only the few months back, every member of the parliament demanded that that should be debased, that judgment meaning against that kind of a bill should be introduced. We do not know. It is the prerogative of the parliament. But if, if it goes against the independence of the judiciary, the same fate, that bill also, or, the, or act will face. What I was telling about, just you all, very young, very fond of knowing, exchanging things, very careful about the social media. These are being observed by the people at power. A few days back, I was in Kaila Shahar. I was referring a speech by Professor Mohan Gopal. He was attending the this Adim Premji University. The professors of law are attending the seminar. He was given three, four examples. What he experienced during his tenure of National, Director of National Judicial Academy. He was a very active person. He went to the villages. There was only one atrocities on a, this uh, scheduled caste people, he went there. 
no police registered a case and they are saying it is useless to the, go to the police station they will never support us so as an activist he says you file an application to the legal services authority they will take up your case you are not to go there and the legal services authority filed that case and it was unceremoniously got the judicial rejection then those two people came to the national judicial academy says just see what we foresaw that has happened now what the answer probably we can give to these two people who are coming from the villages we had to like look at ourselves that's definitely there was some thing judge did not apply his mind in a, in a hurried manner disposed of the case an ultimate comment professor mohan gopal he came is last year here also it is a very caustic comment about our judiciary he says our judiciary is pro power not pro people at least let the tripura judiciary be not pro power be pro people stand by the people who requires justice at least you can say when will we grow older that i have taken that decision there is a, there is another things how do you behave as a judicial officer a litigant coming with a tattered wearing a pearls something how do you behave with them when a person is coming to you with the full bush shirt on and that there is a blazer on then you behave you just check yourself how your behavior changes who needs your support tell me that person who is knowledgeable who is a means to get the justice he needs your support or the person who doesn't have anything no legal knowledge no social backup no resources to fight the case who needs it question yourself and there is the answer this type of conversations give us this opportunity to look at, at ourselves and talking about just bhai bhai talked about the executive how in a very personal moment just executed just retaliated him emotionally just retaliated him there is a team of occasions we have come through and i can tell you when i joined this judiciary i knew that if i have joined it i have to uphold its institutional integrity one judge commit a mistake do a lapse do certain we do not approve it is not only for that judge you remember the society look at us through the prism of his misconduct to the entire institution one incident regarding a former chief justice of india how the judiciary's back was on the wall we do not have any answer to that what has happened we do not know anything so be very careful and Uh, just excuse me if you have become harsh the day i first met you i still remember the it was 2nd of february 2012 most of you were not there at that point of time i told that the judicial officer of that time that as a lawyer i came to know that always there is a idea you are the judge of your colleague that she is a bad officer he is a bad officer except you everyone is a good officer a bad officer you know story of this this is the greek the mythology narcissus he was only fond of him he was looking at his the image in the water and every time he says that most beautiful person in the world nothing like that don't be just nurturing in yourself this kind of attitude in our shastrik tradition also there is one saying and i like it because i remember when i was studying in class 9 headmaster of my school requested me to find out a motto for the school that will be just placed on the entrance of the school so i formed a group amongst ourselves and we found that line that is everywhere it is quoted in various that that 
पूरी प्रश्न नो पूरी पातु नो शे बोया दैट इज़ द बेसिक ट्रेडिशनल वे ऑफ सर्चिंग द नॉलेज व्हाट इज़ देयर द पूरी प्रश्न नो क्वेश्चन टाइम एंड अगेन योर नॉलेज पूरी पातु नो व्हाट एवर एवर लिटल यू हैव लर्न्ड फ्रॉम समवन बी ग्रेटफुल टू दैट पर्सन अदरवाइज योर नॉलेज विल नॉट एक्सपर्ट and ishwar chandra vidyasagar this iconic person who were the precursor of the bengal awakening he wrote taking some other sources knowledge is such a thing the more you spread it it will grow in you joto hi koribe dan toto hi jabe bere that was exactly the ishwar chandra used it so whatever you learn it is not in your savings it is not your deposit that someone will take you at share it that i have come across the judgment talk to yourself about the development of the law because always the judicial academy cannot fill up that gap in a year three times four times and you know the the format of these discussions most of time excludes you this is the format because other formats are not possible because you are working you, you have to go back again to work on the next date so it is a better to study yourself share with everyone if you think really this someone is a little bit lagging behind affectionately take into your group giving that confidence that you have earned through your studies and researches among you self make a relation so that that particular relation in the fraternity give you the power and authority that if i i i sought to be the harassed by anyone else enter fraternity will stand up in my favor but what i am just telling now that is the contrary to what is existing in you that is the harsh word i like to tell you please change this attitude every month an anonymous letter is being received by the high court against the judicial officer and we are not that duffer that we cannot understand who has written it one day just at beginning years i remember still in 2015 one letter came to justice gupta very serious allegation against a particular judicial officer this is gupta call me what to do that was he was leave without any name that time the supreme court that decision did not come that it must be name should be exposed and affidavit must be there that was not there just i said justice gupta that a coward who cannot speak out his name in the letter we shall not take cognizance of that letter because that can be the open your weapon in the hand of some person to tarnish your image maybe he has taken a very right decision and he did not like it at least we are doing that but what part the not the allegations we can discreetly also inquire into the allegation but what is hurting us that you are backstabbing someone and he doesn't know even what you are doing i would just request you stop this and i am one of the persons i have come through so many turmoils in love i know what is happening where and who is doing it what what is the mind behind it this absolutely relating to the judicial ethics and the final and foremost word for the judicial independence that unless you can maintain your integrity your independence will be corroded a person with a strong morality strong sense of duty can only be the independent and unless a judge is independent don't expect that the institution will be independent time has come as justice bhaipai has correctly stated that every day in the newspaper you will find one judge has been suffered hit and run in jharkhand so when they cannot coerce you 
by various methods of influencing some people, they have started doing that. We must be very careful. Internal integrity of the fraternity must be forced now. This is time. Don't give opportunity, the element outside the instrument, to, to just heat you in any manner. I'm using that word, heat you in any manner. We know that something is happening. Encouragement is coming from outside. I would request you, the brothers and sisters, don't accept this influence from the outside for whatever reason. One of the judicial officers confided me one day how the public prosecutor behave with them. They become the messengers of the power. If one public officer ever does it to you, don't allow him to meet him. Then message will be loud and clear. Let him argue before your court, no difficulty. But don't allow it to enter into chamber. All the time I say all the judicial officers, as far as practicable, don't allow the lawyers, public officers to come into your chamber, talk to you in a friendly manner. Because when a public prosecutor is coming to your chamber, the moment you are hearing a bail matter, I'm just talking about the young judges, a bail matter, and ultimately you reject the bail application. I have, I have come from that side also, I know. Immediately in the bar, there will be talk that public prosecutor has influenced that judge. It, it may not be that true at all, but this is the impression that you create. You should not do that. And at the beginning comment, I have stated, even if I request, refuse it. I have not done. I have already completed. I'm on the 11th year of my job. I never asked any law, judge. I never talked to you with any matter pending before your court. I hardly spoke, speak to you in a, in, a, in a private space. I only hear, okay, I will look into this. As a portfolio judge, sometimes you meet me. You should meet me. There are no business deal with your matters in any manner. I am highlighting it. You do not know from which side the institution is being intruded. Stop it. This is your duty as a soldier of this institution. Now I am presenting, actually, I was planning because I knew that Justice Bhaipai always says I am not a very comfortable in speaking, but you know that the way he powerfully communicated the experience and the very concept of these judicial independence. For the, those who have recently just going to join the judiciary or have joined, I will just show certain slides. First slide will be relating to a statement that the judges made 800 years before. That you just see. This is you know, all know, I think. Can anyone say that is from where it has been quoted? I have given the hint into the, the picture. Yes, it is in the Magna Carta. Article 40 of the Magna Carta, I have quoted it. That is 1200. 15, Magna Carta was signed. What the first, the resolve the judges stay, and that is still valid. To no one we sell, to no one we deny or delay right of justice. So as a community of judges, for last 800 years, that was our place, that was our resolve to carry forward. This is not a club judiciary. So that is your duty. That still for the last 800 years, the judges community has looked into this aspect very carefully worldwide. And they're trying to do that. As Justice Bhaipai says again, some of the judges has paid the price also. And I believe the people like Justice Bhaipai is venerated by the society apart from the other judges, because they have suffered it. Just I'm coming to the next slide. We have lost Justice Lahauti only four days back. It is his the statement. You know, those who have visited National Judicial Academy, there is a monograph of Justice Lahauti, Canons of Judicial Ethics. 
you, you find out it is available in the PDF format. My entire this discourse is based on, it is the primary source of my telling the things from that, uh, this Motilal Shetulwad lecture on the judicial ethics that have taken. That's how this is the greatest strength of the judiciary is the faith of the people in it. Faith, confidence, and acceptability cannot be commended. They have to be earned. And that cannot be, can be done only by developing the inner strength of morality and ethics. Exactly these are the words spoken by Justice Bhai Pai. This is where you are different from other people. This is some used to say that you live like a saint. I don't say that. I say you insulate yourself in such a manner, develop your inner strength and the morality so that your integrity can never be questioned by anyone. And that is the greatest strength of our judiciary. It is not only your strength, it is the strength of the judiciary. This is a Supreme Court of India, 2005 Supreme Court decision, oft quoted every time you say, don't pollute the stream of justice, you have heard several times. What does it say? To keep the stream of justice clean and pure, just must be endowed with sterling character, impeccable integrity, and upright behavior. Erosion thereof would undermine the efficacy of the rule of law and the working of constitution itself. Just see. So well written. The one individual judge's mistake has a big impact on the rule of law, which is the bedrock of our constitutional democracy. So the huge responsibility on, his, on your shoulder, every time, every day you check up your role, whether somewhere you have done a mistake, even inadvertent, unintentional mistake, you become your judge for that your conduct. This is just I'm showing you. This has been taken, this word has been taken the letter part is the Chief Justice of Israel, Mr. Arahan Barak. You have heard of, he's a very, he's a very famous book called The Role of a Judge in a Democracy. Judges are not born, but sculpted. For the those who are now getting on the induction training, do you think you are the judges? Because you know, know the law? Judging is completely different from knowing the law. The role of a judge is not the gifts comes from the knowledge of the law. As the he how as human being he is. That uh, just as uh, Mohanty was telling is a uh, compassion. Is an important aspect. This is one of the sterling qualities of the judge. Just look that the, the judge has been by Arahan Barak. The need for an independent and impartial ju judiciary manned by persons of sterling quality and character, undaunting courage, and determination of resolute impartiality and independence. Who would dispense justice without fear or favor, ill will or affection? Justice without fear or favor, ill will or affection is the cardinal creed of our constitution and the solemn assurance of every judge to the people of this country. This, this is a black part is from the Arhan Baraks and the latter part is my comment. So don't get confused because this has been taken from the oath that the judges take and that is the part of the constitution. The judge what plays during the taking of oath says that I will not work without, I will work without fear or favor, ill will or affection. So unless you can follow this, being a judge is a failure. Then, then, then the aspect of social behavior. This is the most this is disturbing and controversial part. Judges ordinarily must observe certain rules of decorum in their social behavior. A little isolation and aloofness are the price which one has to pay. Exactly a few minutes back. Like, just is uh, pay being a judge because a judge can never know which case will come before him and who may be concerned in it. 
so that this insulation is absolutely required. That office of the judge, it is an office of the public trust. Because we exist, because public has trust in us. Otherwise, nobody will come to us because you cannot force someone to institute litigation. If people think that I can trust the judiciary, then only they will come to you. There is an important aspect, the element of public trust. Judicial office is essentially a public trust. Society is therefore entitled to expect that a judge must be a man of high integrity, honesty, and required to have moral vigor, ethical firmness, and impervious to the corrupt or venial influences. He is required to keep most exacting standards of propriety in judicial conduct. Any conduct which tends to undermine public confidence in the integrity and, in, 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 and impartiality of the court would be deleterious to the efficacy of the judicial process. If this slide is taken by you as a taken away from this conference, every answer is given by us. That what we want you should be. You should keep the public trust in the judiciary. Now this is has been dealt by Justice Bhaitpai. The independence of the judiciary. Concept of independence of the judiciary is a noble concept which inspires this constitutional scheme and constitutes foundation on which rests the edifice of our democratic polity. If there is one principle which runs through the entire fabric of the constitution, it is the principle of rule of law. And under the constitution, it is the judiciary which is entrusted with the task of keeping every organ of the state within the limits of law and thereby making the rule of law meaningful and effective. It is to aid the judiciary in this task that power of judicial review has been conferred upon the judiciary and it is by exercising these powers which constitute one of the most potent weapons in the armory of the law that the judiciary seeks to protect the citizen against violation of his constitutional or legal rights or misuse or abuse of power by the state or its officers. So we all know as a student of law that the concept of separation of powers from the days of the Montesco that has been experimented in various democracies in our country that has been done. But this Lakshman Rekha controversy is always there about the judicial overreach, how the judicial is, is behavior, behave in a way. There is a opinion, there is a different schools of thoughts. But the if the judiciary doesn't have the independence, it cannot keep the rule of law. And if there is no rule of law, there is no democracy, it will be only an autocratic state which our constitution abhors. So that is where our role is assigned. Ethics and moralities. Just I'm going there. This cannot be founded on authority thrust upon it. It cannot be thrust upon you by any authority that you are moral and you are ethical. Nobody can just impose like this. It's like you're given a wearer and you wear it. It is not like that. You have to earn it. Every day you have to earn it. Every day you have to go through the tests of various that whether I'm conforming to that. Now, many of you may not hear uh, because this persons are nowadays not remembered. Have you heard of Rishi Kattayan? Maybe some one of you definitely heard of him. Rishi Kattayan is a wonderful a kind of a old age jurist. He had, that is called Shukra Niti. That is, I have taken from the English verse because I cannot read that old Sanskrit. It enumerates five vices which every judge should guard against to be impartial. These are the vices. What are the vices? Raga means anger. But Katayana has not means that anger. He says, leaning in favor of a party. You are angry with the other party because you want to favor someone. And two, Lova, greed. Most dangerous thing, because we are living in a consumer society, you know if you do some favor, you can also be favored by that. And that is destroying somewhere some part of the judiciary. This is a greed, boy, fear. 
that I may be harmed if I do not just the way their power that is Professor Mohan Gopal the power wants the to way I am to pass that judgment this is the boy fear you have to avoid it otherwise you cannot be impartial they shall ill will against anyone against the lawyer against your colleague judge anyone if you have the ill will nurturing in it that will be reflected in your behavior and you will be no more impartial. So try to win over it. And then the last one is Badi Nashuscho Raha Shruti. Badi Nishto Badi Nosto. This is a Sanskrit word. Badi who comes for the justice. Raha Shruti. You hear him separately. Right? Not in, in a public space, in an open forum. That is that this English translation that has been done, hearing a party to a case separately in the absence of the other party. Someone is coming to your chamber. They said, this is my case, and you know that I will win the case. He said, is it so? He want to just take out a word from you. And the moment you even unconsciously give that word to that person, first of all, you committed a wrong and allow him to come to your chamber and talk about the cases that may or that is before you, and then when say, you become in a dilemma, which is a dilemma of the morality. This is our Sanskrit Shastra's take about our judges. These are the statements. These are, you, you cannot read it. I will also not try to read it, but you read at home. In 1999, Supreme Court's full court took, took a resolution that is called Restatement of the Values of the Judicial Life. They have enumerated several things that what we can do and what we cannot do. Right, that 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 is there. I, I will not read it. It is very longish. Already we are running out of time. But you take down. This is the restatement of values of the judicial life. It is available in the internet. You read it, and this is the decision of the Supreme Court. And all the high courts in their full court meeting accepted that because we are a new high court. We had no occasion to that, but we follow that principle. This is another thing. Bangalore principle. 2002 in Bangalore, there was a, a conference of the judges from the Commonwealth countries. They took certain resolutions. What will be the judicial conduct and will be the ethics? You also find out, they, they principally, they just pointed out six things to be followed. Independence, impartiality, integrity, propriety, equality, and competence and diligence. Earlier, before 2002, there was another word. In 2002, that has been modified. That was a word called accountability. And when this group met in Netherlands in 2002, they said no accountability words should be deleted because accountability gives different kind of a meaning. Accountable to whom? Accountable to executive. Accountable to parliament. So they just say that it was, doesn't concern us. We are accountable to our standards. We are accountable we our assigned job. We are accountable our ethics. And they have now con confine this statement to the ethics. You can also find out. Otherwise, I can share this uh, this uh, slide to you. You can take it, take home and read it. Just the, this the, the this is the final words. It just must be not only faith but true faith and allegiance to the constitution of India. Just would you kindly be very frank? How many of you read the full constitution, except reading the notes about the fundamental, uh, the rights? How many of you read the entire constitution? We are taking oath that I will not allow constitution to be submerged. I will protect the... How many have read that constitution? So this is where we stand. Take a place that will read the constitution. It is not a very complex text. You can easily read it. Maybe some parts are not very material for dispensing justice. These are the executives and other roles are provided. But you read it, you will know the relations, how the governor is relating to the cabinet, how the cabinet runs the justice administration, what was the link, and how much this link is powerful, whether they can dominate us or not. These are the study area as a judge you must do in the constitutional exercise. This is, uh, this is a Queensland Chief Justice lemma. And he was a very angry judge. He was 
he has terminated in the record number of judicial officers. 41 judicial officers were terminated by him on the ground of misconduct. And he's known for that. He's a very strict judge. Say, if you mistake once, I'm ready to forgive you. Second time, I will censor you. Third time, you're out. So he was very strict. Just see. Overall objective of guaranteeing judicial independence is to ensure a reasonable perception of impartiality. Judicial independence is but a means to an end. If judges could be perceived as impartial, without judicial in independence, the requirement of independence would be unnecessary. However, judicial independence is critical to the public's perception of impartiality. Independence is the cornerstone, a necessary prerequisite for judicial in the impartiality. Just so there is, there, there is what we call is a paradox in his statement that judicial independence is but a means to an end. If the judges could be perceived as impartial without judicial independence, the requirement of independence would be unnecessary. Right? If without judicial independence, a judge can be perceived as impartial, what is the requirement of the judicial independence? This is the proposition number one. Proposition number two is very important. However, judicial independence is critical to the public's perception of the impartiality. That is where there are public trust. Why public trust us? Because they perceive us as an independent judiciary cannot be influenced neither by the executive nor by the power from any other source. So that is so important. If, if, if you are absolutely impartial, there's no necessity of the judicial independence, but people for whom we exist, they think unless there is a judicial independence, your, partial, your impartiality can be perceived as not believable or trustworthy. That is why the necessity of the judicial independence is required. So this paradox is actually is not a paradox. It shows the two sides of our reality, where as a judge we live. The standard of the judicial behavior, what the society demands from us. Society demand for uh, honesty in a judge is exacting and absolute. It is nothing, OK, he's fine, he's honest. No, he's absolutely honest. He must be absolutely honest. The standard of ju judicial behavior, both on off the bench, are normally extremely high. For a judge to deviate from the standard of honesty and impartiality is to betray the trust deposed in him. No excuse or no re legal re relativity can condone such betrayal. Strong words. You cannot just walk in the life with a Bermuda on, on you and with a, with a slip as a judge is walking through the road. There is nothing wrong in it. You can say that I'm a judge, whatever. I'm also a human being. I can. No, you don't have that. You are always to note of the public perceptions. That may not be very correct. It may not be very modern also. But you have to take care of these also. Because we exist for them. From the standpoint of justice, the size of the bribe or scope of corruption cannot be the scale for measuring a judge dishonored. A single dishonest judge not only dishonors himself and disgraces his office, but jeopardizes the integrity of the entire judicial institution or system. So how much the demand from the society from you regarding your integrity? You always remember this. That is what I was just telling you. A judge is constantly up under public gaze. Everybody is talking about you. Sometimes you do not hear them, but they are all talking about you. In the bar, in the some social gatherings, you are talked about. Right? When a judge sits on trial, it's very nicely worded. He himself is on trial. When you are conducting a trial, actually it is you are on trial. How you do behave? How do you conduct the entire trial? The trust and confidence of, quote unquote, we the people, the first words of the Constitution of India. In judiciary stands on the bedrock of its ability to dispense fearless and impartial justice. Any action which may shake that foundation is just, just not permitted. Once having assumed the judicial office, the judge is a judge for 24 hours. 
it is a mistaken assumption for any holder of the judicial office to say that I am a judge from 10 to 5 and from 5 to 10, it is my private life. As Jassi Bhai Pai was saying that, that you are a judge for 24 hours, no private life is such to enjoy like the ordinary citizen because you are under always the public guest. That, uh, that day we were participating in that workshop, this Monopatru workshop. They have a software. They are putting the judgment of the, all the judges. And they are finding out the preferences of the judges and cultural element of the judges. What he likes, what he does like. And the lawyers are getting information and training and modifying and modulating their argument before that particular judge. So very, very careful that when you are writing the judgment, your preferences, personal preferences, I mean, should not be reflected in the judgment. It will be as objective as is possible. So I will say that these are words uh, several times you have heard. Before that, I have a story to tell you. That recently I have come across that a judge is compared with a flower. And you know there's a, there's a, have you heard the name of Madan Mishra, Shankaracharya? Have you heard this name, Shankaracharya, but Madan Mishra you have not named. Huh? Mandan. Huh? So Mandan Mishra is a virtually, who actually shaped the Shankaracharya. So, one day, Shankaracharya challenged his guru that I am a better narrator of religion. They say the Shastrakar. So Saraswati came because both of them are disciples of Saraswati says, I am just giving you a garland of flowers. You start talking to each other. Whose flower will be dried first? He will be treated as defeated. Then both of them asked Saraswati after the debate how this can be a test. The way you talk, whether with anger, anger generated heat in the body, and the flowers get dried up. So avoid anger. As Socrates says, judges to hear courteously, answer wisely, consider soberly, and decide impartially. Hope. You will be those kind of a judge as I was narrating. And every day I read particular these few words because I'm a, I'm a very intemperate person. Thank you very much. Thank you for the authoritative discussion, my lord. During this session, we have found that Justice Vaipai has discussed about the independence of judiciary, which is the basic structure of the Indian constitution, and how the influence of the relatives, family members affect the independence of justice. Honorable Mr. Justice S. Talabatra has discussed about the independence of judiciary and its social media ramifications, the NJC case. His lordship has also urged the Tripura judiciary to be pro-people and not pro-powered. His Lordship has also emphasized that forging fraternity among the judicial officers need to be strengthened in these tough days when our judicial officers are under attack from the external factors. His Lordship has also quoted the Chief Justice of Israel with respect to public trust, social behavior and independence of judiciary along with judicial conduct. Thank you, my lords. Now the house is open for the participant judicial officers for the interactions. Good afternoon, Lord Chips. I'm Shankarlal Dutta, now posted as additional law secretary uh, in the law departments. Uh, 
actually lord chief today we are talking about uh, judicial independence so so far idea goes uh, judicial independence includes uh, individual independence and institutional independence when it comes to former uh, uh, i can say proudly that uh, we are individually independent because uh, i have never faced any kind of external influence uh, neither in the court or in the law department but uh, when it comes to institutional independence i think uh, we have to think that whether we are uh, fully institutionally independent if i take the example of a criminal justice delivery system uh, which includes uh, uh, other wings of the government and uh, besides judiciary other wings of the government has also role to preserve the justice uh, uh, so many many times we see that uh, criminal cases fail because of unfair investigation so uh, as proactive uh, presiding officer when we see cases fall on the ground of uh, unfair investigation then uh, somehow it affects us uh, subconsciously or consciously so what should be our attitude uh, towards uh, that such kind of events first of all there is one question i think just lying below your question is whether do you have any power to just remedy this uh, casualty of the justice that is one question i find another question th that is beyond our capacity we can only give the suggestion advice there is that we are every day from the constitutional courts are giving to the government even there is a judgment of this uh, two judgments are there how to be the public prosecutors are to be appointed how the brilliant people to be brought in the, the this uh, appointments of the public prosecutor even few days back i have passed i have asked one the police officer in my court he doesn't know abc of law but he is given the entrustment of investigating thing then i asked the sp he says that i will change him he has changed him so now, now what you can do where is your power lies there are two powers one is section 172 subsection 2 of the cfpc right it says time to time you can look into the case diary you cannot guide the investigation but you can keep a passive monitoring of the case showing that why are you not uh, this recording the evidence so early because most of the case you will find nowadays what is the rule of the day the investigating officers are not recording the witnesses in time they just indolently sit and whenever they want they will go and and you know the basic principle of investigation as early as possible right now go find out who is the because these are the fresh people they will not be tutored they will not manipulate things immediately if you record secondly after some time you record there will be so many influences in the witness also and they can forget things exactly what has happened during that time but they are not doing it is a matter of the state policy because the criminal justice system has a three stakeholders judiciary is the only one of the stakeholders they decide on the basis of the material provided by the state and third is that when a charge sheet or the investigation report is filed before you there is a section 17388 subsection 8 is in your hand most of our judicial officers i appreciate your question do not go through that when they are taking cognizance or they are just accepting the what you call is effort you do not go through the what the police has done on the basis of the report, you say, yes, accepted. Or if some complaint is there, you just issue notice. Do not the, give the total devo uh, devotion to go through the report, but you must go through the report because you have a very unique right. You have a very unique power under this section to cancel that investigation and direct the further investigation must be made. Uh, even two or three Supreme Court decision, one is the Priyapal versus State of Assam. You can see, say, elaborately, it's a path breaking judgment, judgment of justice omitav roy he says nothing doing even after someone is executing the fresh investigation can be directed by the court this of course the constitutional court but you have the power of 170 uh, 173 subsection 8 where you can direct the further investigation you can also indicate in your order that why are, why you are not accepting that investigation report but we have to be very committed that we must look into these things. Otherwise, you cannot have a remedy. And crying from the rooftop, yes, for the once or twice is very good. 
but ultimately this will just corrode the trust in the institution because we have given the power under section 172 subsection 2 and 173 subsection 8 you have to apply it in that level that is the answer this is the part you can play other part you cannot play anything even the power under section 172 subsection 2 is a very limited power you cannot give in a particular direction that you direct the investigation in a particular manner you can just indicate you can even you cannot suggest it so just exercise that power yes anyone else now everyone is hungry now now we can close it okay so let's close it now thank you my lord with this we have come to the end of the day one's program of the annual judicial conclave. I request the judicial officers to please collect their annual reports, if not already collected, from the registration desk. On behalf of the High Court of Tripura, I request everyone to please join us at the High Court lawn for the cultural program which has been organized to celebrate the ninth High Court day at 5.45 p.m. in the evening. May I now request everyone to kindly proceed to the judges' lounge to have the lunch. Thank you.